It's time to taste the juniper mead. Now, this one, we started it on September 9th of 2020. We bottled it on the 2nd of December, even though I wrote the 4th of December on the label, because, you know, <clears throat> I'm a natural blonde. Today is actually the 4th of December, because that's what I was thinking of when I bottled it. He was projecting into the future. And we're now going to taste it. So this is 9, 10, 11, 12. It's like not even three months old. Okay, so this is still a fairly young mead. Ooh, I just heard a little bit of fizz. But that's probably temperature differential more than anything. Because we've had weird temperatures here. It's been cold, it's been hot, so we're keeping the heat on and blah, whatever. This was not refrigerated. That's our new way. It is the way. Now, the reason why we're not refrigerating or we're attempting to remember not to refrigerate is because temperature differences can change the flavor profile of your beverage. So if you are familiar with drinking whiskey in particular, if you add whiskey to rocks, in other words, put it on ice, sure. then it's going to tone down a lot of those flavors, but yet the water enhances some of the flavors and that's a different topic altogether. But being cold takes the alcohol heat down, so that's why some people do that too. So we are attempting to remember to not chill it while we're doing our tasting so that way we could have a more pure experience um, and then you at home can decide whether you want to chill it or not on your own. Okay, clarity. It ain't clear. Nope. You know what? I don't care. It's not horrible clarity. I mean, if I put my finger there, I can see my finger right through it. So I'm going to say this is like a five on clarity. It's it's just not clear. And on that subject of clarity, we, at least I, immediately go to why isn't it clear? Because the elements that we used in this really shouldn't have added to a cloudy no beverage. Or like that. <clears throat> but we are in the midst of doing a test that includes yeast holes in one of them and not in the other and we were noticing that the yeast holes if i'm remembering correctly mm -hmm. made a cloudier beverage a little cloudier yeah could just be that example but and we used yeast holes in this mm -hmm. so it is possible okay but doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the flavor. Not this level of clarity. If it was chunky like soup, that's different. <laughs> I'd gag drinking it, that so that's like, not going to happen. Uh, no. On the nose, I get the honey sweet. A little bit of almost a, I want to say caramel, but it's not. A little bit of a pine citrusy thing. I get the spice citrus combo. Uh, if I didn't know ahead of time that this was juniper, um, I might have yeah. had difficulty pinpointing that it's juniper but yeah, because i do know very, it's juniper i can search and find that scent we did use easily. one ounce of juniper in this uh the dried berries and we could have probably used more i'm not saying we had to but we could have used more i don't think it would have overpowered i was afraid of it overpowering because many recipes called for half of the amount of juniper that we used so you know and we did use a clove so i'm thinking the combination of the clove with the juniper just lends your mind to mixed spices oddly i do get a little bit of the clove in the smell just a touch which is what i wanted just a backbone of it i think that's nice i'm gonna take my short sip yeah now the short sip doesn't mean a small sip necessarily it just means a sip that you take in and swallow really quickly just like you would when you're normally drinking something and not trying to analyze it for a camera however what it does is it acclimates your tongue to the alcohol level. Yeah. Which was? 14.3%. So this is not low alcohol. This is like a mid-range, almost on the upper range for what we like for mead. I'm not getting a lot of alcohol in the flavor, though. No, I think the spices kind of mask anything yeah. that you would be getting from the alcohol, making you think that some of the more aggressive notes are actually from the spice rather than from the alcohol. Now we should probably be clear here that I don't actually like the taste of juniper. Okay. It's just piney to me. I like rosemary, but I don't like juniper. So figure that one out. I don't find this objectionable so far. On the short sip, I got a nice sweet, but still clean and bright, refreshing flavor. I think, like you said, the clove and the juniper work well together to tone down that little bit of sweetness. The 
22 points of sweetness that we have. I think <clears throat> having a mead be our base for this is is making it seem more like a methylglen than a well, it gin. Is a methylglen. Right, it is it is a methylglen, but Oh, oh yeah, it doesn't taste like gin at all. It doesn't taste like gin. Which is probably a good thing for me because <laughs> I'd have handed her the glass by now. Yeah. Um on the long sip, I just did mine. Immediately I get the honey character coming in. And then the juniper, that little bit of astringency and bitterness comes in and balances that sweetness. I get the flavors, but it's not overwhelming. I don't think I would have wanted to add more juniper. After after tasting it now, no, we have the right amount in there. Maybe even just a touch too much, but not not much. Just just a little bit. There's interesting tactile sensations that I get from drinking the various beverages that we brew. And sometimes it, the overall sensation is is watery. Sometimes the overall sensation is that cloying, mm. covering, coating. Well, not cloying, but coating. Right. And then sometimes, like in this example, I'm getting a softness. Yeah. It's not really coating, but it's certainly not watery. It just seems very... The tactile sensation is soft. And I think why... That is, is things that make it um, not taste soft are like acidity and astringency. This is low acidity, I believe, but it has a good astringency and a decent sweetness. So if it had more acidity, you it wouldn't be as soft. Right, right. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's slightly out of balance. In I just opinion. think it's it's an interesting sensation. I'm actually enjoying it, so it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I mean, I'm going back for seconds, so it can't be all bad. It's just not a word I'm normally drawn to to describe beverage. But so. I, I actually know what you mean. Yeah. I, I totally get what you're saying. So and this is our new thing. We just drink a half bottle of mead while we're doing tastings <laughs> now, I, I guess. So... For me, my experience on the long sip is that my first sensation is that softness. And mm. sure. it's very comfortable and nice and pleasant. And then I think because that's what I'm getting first, all the spice notes that come after that, it almost seems like it they've been amplified slightly because of the contrast. Yeah, I just took another long sip to see if I could pick out what you're talking about. I was going with flavor. She's going with feeling. And that's interesting that there's different feelings and sensations of it, not just different flavors. It is soft. It's very drinkable, very easily drinkable. Just kind of goes right in. The finish on it is actually longer than I would have thought. And I'm mostly getting a little bit of the clove and the, uh, like the pine kind of uh, taste from that as the finish. It's still there like 10, 20 seconds later. It's not bad. I'm getting a tiny, tiny hint of that honey bitterness that I get from fermented honey, but it's not unpleasant. Yeah, it's very It's, it's there, which it's there in pretty much any mead I drink. So it's less pronounced in this one. I think I, it's good. I like this. I think it's interesting also because as I'm trying to explore the different flavors, I, I'm holding my breath. And so when I mm. finally swallow yeah i find myself exhaling deeply through my nose and that combination seems to heighten the herbal essences so i'm getting more of the juniper um in that exhale if that makes any sense sure i i, I kind of get what you're saying the exhale definitely is part of the process mm -hmm. you will get different flavors and more flavors when you do that. You'll sometimes taste things that you didn't taste before. Overall, I think this is nice. Now, that's a strong statement because I don't like juniper. I really don't like gin at all. I don't like juniper flavored things. It just isn't my thing. Now, if you refer back to when we first started making this, we in intentionally added things to this beyond just the juniper to mm -hmm. make it something that more might be palatable. more palatable for Brian. So that, in that way, it's a success. So that's why we added the orange. We used the orange blossom honey, and we added the clove. Yeah, it's to a put, little... To push it more towards the methaglin side, or what he's right. used to, the ones that he's really appreciated, rather than just a juniper mead. I think the little bit of citrus helps tone that pine 
taste down a little bit. But it's funny because the pine isn't so prominent as the bitterness and astringency of the pine. That's what I really get. And, and I'm I, glad we toned that down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think the honey really helped with oh, yeah. that. And that initial softness that this mm -hmm. combination has kind of just diminishes that. I will still go on record and say that this is moderately out of balance, as in it's not perfectly balanced on the triangle, but not every mead is. And yeah. even good ones don't have to be. Balance is important to keep in mind, but if you make everything perfectly the right amount of sweetness, the right amount of this, the right amount of this, they're going to get kind of boring after a while. Yeah. This is yeah. interesting because it's out of balance. And... And I'm glad you pointed that out because I think if we added the acidity that I feel like this is perhaps missing, then it would ruin that softness that I know I keep yeah. referring to, but it's really unique to this beverage and I'm enjoying it, so I don't want to ruin that. Right. Even the sweetness level on this, if it was lower, I think the astringency oh. of that juniper would be too much. If it was sweeter, I think it would be kind of gross. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine sweet pine needles. Just not really all that appetizing, right? So I think, even though it's out of balance, it's perfectly balanced. <laughs> it's actually balanced exactly <laughs> it's, the way this should be. Perfectly out of balance. Which is kind of an interesting concept when you think about it, because then you say, well, what's balanced? What does that mean? Well, it's supposed to mean that everything works in harmony. Well, by that definition, this is balanced. I would say, if you wanted to, uh, since I'm... I'm all my, have more. all my adjectives are not flavor-based today. I'm not really sure why, but I would attribute this, if I were describing it musically, as jazz. Because it has kind of what those kind of jazz? funky, discordant pops, but you enjoy each little bit of it without going, oh, what's wrong here? So, like, for me, the softness, again, and then the the oomph of the the spice herb thing and then that breath at the end that just pushes up the juniper even more i i get it i find it unique and oh it's definitely unique and interesting but really enjoyable i would not put this as one of my top 10 meads even however i can drink this which that is a, a huge thing because I made this for her. I mean, we all know that. <laughs> I did not make this for me to enjoy. This was made for Derica. And I don't have a problem doing that. It's just I didn't expect to actually enjoy it. And I think I do. I mean, if I was to say, like, would I cook with this? Would I put this in something? It might work in certain things, like as a marinade for chicken. For some reason, this seems to, seems to resonate. Maybe even Marinade pork. for pork. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I would not put this with a beef. No. Um, I could see this even with certain seafood dishes, like yep. with clams and, and sure. um, scallops and things like that. For some reason, shrimp to me is a little too on the sweet side for this, so I don't think that that works as well. Yeah. I think it could work with like a, a lemon type sauce on a fish or with a pasta. Um, I think it's too much for a red sauce for pasta. Yeah. It's not sweet enough to be dessert, no. so I would not have it as dessert. It's also not crisp enough to be an aperitif. Yeah. So it's got some unique properties yeah. that you, wow, well, you agreed with everything I, agreed I just said. I agreed with everything you said, yeah. Wow, is that like a first or what? <laughs> but there's some unique properties to this, and I just thought that was really interesting, um, that I would cook with this for certain things. Like, I could put this into a lemon wine butter sauce, and I think it would actually work instead of the wine, you know what I mean? Um, but I wouldn't put it into a red sauce because it's just wrong. I I see this as one of those sleeper beverages where you have it in your selection, you know it's good, but it's not what you, you are drawn it. to. Mm -hmm. And you might go back to it because like, oh, well, yeah, I haven't had this in a while and I drank all that other stuff that I was really looking <laughs> for. And then being surprised at how nice and enjoyable it is on its own merits. This would go well with all the same foods that I would cook it in. Yeah. Like everything that I was saying was kind of interchangeable as cook cook it in it or drink it with it. Would I fill a mug of this and drink it? Here's the honest truth. If we were almost out of mead and I didn't have anything else, I would. Now, there are some meads that we've made and some beverages we've made that I still wouldn't. I would go without. I'd drink water or something or whiskey that night. This one, 
if we didn't have a lot of selection, I might actually do that. It's it's borderline for me. It's it's kind of close to I really like this versus that little bit of, mm, is bothering me. So I'm I'm close. How about you? I, I you would drink this anytime. I would drink you? it, but I would forget <laughs> that I want to drink it. Right. In other words, it wouldn't be your first go-to, but it's on the list. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. So we knew that we were going to be tasting this today because we have a schedule, surprisingly enough. And I was talking to Brian about what would I do differently? And it's mm. not what would I do differently to this particular beverage because now that we're tasting it and investigating it further, I actually appreciate it for what it is and yeah. some of the things that come to mind to change it, I, I hesitate on because Take I think the juniper berries? it might make it <laughs> smack you <laughs> it might make it not as pleasurable so yeah i'm hesitant and our scaling system makes that difficult too <clears throat> because if i say what would i do to improve this by that definition i can't think of much i would do to improve this as a juniper mead i can think of a lot of things i would do to make this taste better for me that's a different thing but as a person who loves and enjoys gin me i am planning on creating a recipe and I've talked to Brian about it, and he thinks it's really cool because it oh. introduces a lot mm -hmm. of different new techniques that we haven't yeah. shared with you yet on This is a neat channel. idea. Um, we'll give you the spoiler. It's okay. That's going Just towards the gin side versus the meat mm -hmm. side. Yeah, this came out as a mead with juniper flavoring. She wants to make um, essentially a wine that tastes more like a gin and more like a very specific brand of gin at that. And for some of you who are confused on the whole process of making wine versus making gin, gin is a distilled product. Yep. It is not legal for us to distill in our area, but it is legal without for a us, license. But it is legal for us to ferment something. So we're going to right. create a fermentation that references a gin. Let me let me make one more clear statement on that. A lot of people, and I mean like a lot of people don't seem to understand that there's actually a difference between fermentation and distillation. Fermentation means using yeast or bacteria or fungus of any kind to convert sugars into alcohol. Okay, It's a natural process. It happens in nature all the time. And in most states of the United States and many countries, it is legal to do at home without a license. Okay, Check your laws just to make sure. Distillation is when you take what you got from fermentation and you heat it or freeze it to remove the other things than the alcohol. In the case of freeze distillation, you're removing ice and leaving everything else, which means all the aldehydes, the alcohols, you know, stuff like that. So you're concentrating that alcohol and increasing the alcohol by volume level. In heat distillation, you're actually converting that alcohol to steam since it boils and co converts to vapor faster than water does, and then you're collecting it on the other side. Those are things that we don't do on our channel because, well, they're illegal for us. And I'm just not about to go on camera and do something completely illegal just to show off on YouTube. I'm not going to do that. Um, but fermentation is very different than distillation. It's actually the first step towards distillation. Wines, beers, ciders, meads, those are all fermented beverages. Whiskey, vodka, rum, gin, and a million other things, brandy, those are all distilled products. Now, just to go a step further, brandy is actually wine that's been distilled. So take wine, distill it, now you have brandy. So that's the difference between fermentation and distillation. A lot of people get that confused and they're like, oh, well, if, how come you can't get 40% with this? I'm like, well, because fermentation doesn't go that high. That's why, and they don't, and they don't understand. So I just wanted to make that clarification. And now we've said it, and this video is becoming way too long, but you're still watching, so it's okay, and I'm just going to keep on uh, swirling and sniffing and drinking. So now it is my least favorite time of the show, and that's where we give a number to this. Do you have one ready? I think I want to finish this before I give a number. <clears throat> okay. I just want to preface my score with this. My my score is not really being biased by whether I like Juniper or not. It's being based on how successful this brew was and could, as a Juniper Mead, could I really make this that much better? 
I can flavor it a million different ways and make it more palatable to me, but can I improve it as a juniper mead? That's what I'm basing my score on. I am ready. All right, one, two, three, seven, seven and a half. Hmm. See, there you go. It we we like to be honest with our scores, and that's why I wanted to preface mine with, I don't like juniper. I like this mead. I don't think it's the best thing I've ever made, but I think it's quite good. And I think the recipe stands and holds on its own. When I start to think about what we would change, like she said earlier, it could disrupt what it's got going on now. Now, could I make this taste a whole lot better for me? Oh, heck yeah. There's a million things I could do that I could make this better. But it wouldn't be juniper mead anymore when I do that. So on that basis, I'm going to get, I, I stand by my seven and a half. And I stand by my seven for complete opposite reasons, because I actually really like the taste of juniper, and this doesn't say, hey, I'm juniper to me. She's got a point. So I appreciate it on its own merits, and that's why I gave it a seven, because for us, on our grading scale, anything five or higher means, hey, that's pretty good. Yep. So a seven means, yeah, I'll drink this, no problem. I think that's funny that I give a higher score than you, even <clears> though you're giving a negative, you're more negative about it than I am, even though I don't like it. Right, right. <laughs> if it had less juniper, Brian would give it a higher score. If it had more juniper, I would give it a higher score. Yeah, possibly. So figure that one out. <laughs> but hey, if you like this video, look up. There's another one right there you might like too.